Hi, welcome to my latest video. I've had a few requests from YouTube viewers for a quick guided tour of my Freelander 2, showing all the various things that I've done to it. It is continuously work in progress. Okay, so there's lots of new exciting projects in the pipeline. But since you ask, I will show you what I've done so far and also a few of the things that I plan to do. I have a list, here it is, I will read it out. Let's start off in the engine bay. Okay, so in no particular order, we have air horns, one of my most recent videos. Really loud, really good, highly recommend them. Bracket there, 3D printed. Hopefully I'll be selling that soon on my website. We have a catch can for the oil vapor and this silicone ducting to replace the horrible plastic factory duct that went across the top of the engine leaking oil everywhere, which you can actually still see some of that oily gunk uh, which has been left there. Um, so that's uh, there's a, a video on that ducting and several videos on the oil catch can. Right, what else have we got here? We have got a Skoda washer cap. This is quite nice, this one. You open that out and it turns into a funnel. Quite nice, so you don't spill your, your uh, washer fluid everywhere. I don't think there's much else in the engine bay that I've done. Uh, don't know, I can't think of anything else, but uh, I've got a few projects lined up which may require things in the engine bay. So carrying on around the car, headlight guards. Okay, so we've got uh, LED side light bulbs, LED main beam bulbs, and then Philips Diamond Vision dip beam bulbs. Uh, mainly because LED bulbs are not legal, certainly not for dip beam because they're not CE marked. Uh, the beam pattern's all wrong, they're too bright. They also don't generate any heat. So on a frosty, cold, snowy, misty night, the, your headlights are just gonna, gonna ice up. So you do want some, at least one regular bulb in there somewhere to generate a bit of heat. Um, fog lights down here, sprayed these surrounds black and put in some yellow, uh, they're not LEDs, they're sort of standard, um, they're Osram fog breaker, I think is what they're called, they're sort of yellow bulbs, there's a video on that in my uh, in my video history, if you have a look, you'll, you'll see that. What else have we got here? So we've got uh, this black bumper surround, which I've put on, okay, so this fits the, the pre-facelift model, it's just a styling uh, cosmetic black surround really I think it looks quite meaty makes the car look a bit bit, bit better so, uh, so I thought I'd buy one and put one on because we've got my, my amber strobes here let's quickly turn those on so you can see those working so they've been wired up I've got strobes front and back wired up to switches up here so you can then see those flashing away I sell those strobes and brackets on my website. So if you want some of those, let me know. Um, right, what else? Okay, underneath the car, we've got a Mantec sump guard. Okay, so that one uh, is really, really good if you do any off-roading. I don't think it's available now, but you might better pick one up secondhand. I've actually drilled some uh, big sort of holes in the front of it just to make it look a bit more rugged and a bit more like the sort of steering guards you get on the defenders. Okay, uh, air intakes on the side. Pulled those off, dead easy to pull them off. You just pull them out of the bottom and they come off. Uh, sprayed those black and put in some sequencing indicator lights, uh, which are available from Powerful UK. Uh, look on eBay, etc. Uh, so looking at the wheels here, we have got Big, chunky, all-terrain tyres. These are BF Goodrich uh, KO2, uh, AT KO2. And the size of these is 245-70-17. slash slash So 17-inch wheels, um, but slightly bigger than 
the normal factory tires that they put on for the 17 inch wheel okay but there's no issues with that there's no issues with speedometer calibration i mean technically there's a five percent difference but i have measured it with gps and it's absolutely bang on so you know there's a little bit of a little bit of difference but you, you really don't notice it with 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 gear changes or brakes or anything like that it's 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 negligible so so slightly bigger no issues with body contact the only thing that i would say is i fitted wheel spacers so between the wheels and the, the discs there are 25 millimeter spacers um i did that really just to get a bit more you know Bit, bit of a wider stance to bring those tyres out uh, a little bit closer to the edge of the arch. You don't want to go beyond the arch, that's illegal, you'll be stopped uh, for um, throwing up too much spray and things like that. So uh, so the, the, the other reason for fitting spacers, especially on the back, is it just brings the tyre, the distance between the shock absorber, a uh, little strut, sort of shock absorber, body, tube, vertical tube bit, and the tire, um, as, as standard, is pretty small. I didn't want to risk any stones or anything getting caught in there, so I just put those spacers on there. If you do fit wheel spacers, do not buy cheap ones. Okay, so <clears throat> the ones you want are ideally H and R. They come in 20, 25, 30 millimeter, and uh, they are hub centric, which means they've got a ring around them, like a, like a little lip around them, which locates the wheel. Um, it, it, I've heard of horrible stories of people having, um, you know, some wheel vibrations and things like that, and even wheels breaking off and things like that. If you buy the cheap ones, do not buy the cheap ones. If they break, that's it. You lose a wheel and maybe your life. Okay, so, so you've been warned on that. Only buy the good ones. Okay, so tires, spacers, wheels. These are the 17 inch X, uh, X, um, uh, XS alloy wheels just sprayed black uh, with different center caps in the middle uh, center caps available on eBay so the brakes so on the front the calipers and everything are standard the brakes um, are, the, are the vented discs the vented discs are from the factory but I fitted these you can see that they're grooved cross drilled vented discs with I think I've got Mintex pads in there at the moment. I've also tried EBC green stuff pads, but both very good, both horrendous for brake dust, okay? The grooves on the, the discs, the grooves really keep the, the pad face fresh and um, help sort of get rid of any hot gas and water that's on the, the discs. The holes also allow sort of uh, water and hot gas to escape. So they work really well, okay? Um, so well that I decided to put them on the back as well. Okay, so on the back, you can see here I've actually sprayed the calipers red, and I need to do the front and on the front yet. Um, but I've converted the back from a solid disc to a vented cross drill groove disc with different calipers and carriers. There's caliper and carriers from the petrol engine model, which had vented discs on the back, the diesel had solid. Okay, so I've got vented discs all round with Mintex pads with the grooves and cross drilled and they work fantastically. Really, really well worth doing, uh, especially if you drive quite fast like I do. Um, you know, you need to be able to stop in a hurry. So, okay, looking at my list here, we talked about wheels, we talked about the brakes. Um, we've, we've looked at these amber lights here. Uh, so looking up higher up on the car, We've got roof rack. This is, um, uh, I think it's made by Expedition Racks. It's just like a roof basket. Um, we've got four spotlights there. I will be changing those four for a 42 inch light bar soon, which will be fitted with new brackets coming out from these feet here, going straight across. So this bit of angle aluminium that you can see that the spots are mounted on, that will be going. Um, but that's wired up there. You can just see the wiring there. Um, and then wired down the side of the windscreen down here to some relays. We've got a couple of relays there, down in there. There's one for the roof lights and one for the air horns. Okay, I will be tidying that up at some point, putting the relays in a box, uh, to keep it all waterproof. So moving on towards the the uh, the back of the car, we've got more amber strobes at the back. They're mounted to the factory crossbar. Um, the roof rack itself is attached to 
two of these uh, optional extra crossbars. You, you can buy those online for about 50 quid. Okay, so the roof rack attaches to those, but this crossbar here, uh, which you, you get with the roof rails, that's got the, the amber strobes fitted to it, which as you can see are nice and bright. Um, really well worth fitting those if you do any kind of recovery or off-road or you go out in the snow and help pull people out of ditches and things like that. That's why I put them on. I do end up uh, stopping and helping people quite often, so it's just nice to be a bit more visible. Inside the car, we have got... Let's turn those strobes off now. We've got an extra switch here for the roof lights so that enables the main beam spotlights on the roof not so much for legal reasons it has been queried in the MOT but the MOT tester sort of looked it up and came to the conclusion you didn't actually need an extra switch but it's good to have one just in case you get stopped by the police and they sort of make the law up as they're going along but um, the uh, the main reason for fitting that switch to turn on and off these these spotlights here is if it's snowing or it's heavy rain or even fog uh, you, you don't want uh, high level lights okay so you, you you shouldn't really even be using main beam in those conditions but i found in the snow it was actually best with main beam on the main headlights without the roof lights with the roof lights i was actually getting a headache the, the snow it was like some sort of um, millennium falcon uh, hyperdrive star star field kind of thing um, all the snow flying at the windscreen and dazzling me. So uh, uh, I fitted that switch so I can turn them off. So what else have we got inside? We've got the blue blue lights. Okay, so blue LEDs, uh, I think they're Cree LEDs. Did a video on fitting those recently. Um, what else, what else? So we've got uh, one of these armrests here. You can buy these on eBay, um, made by a company in Italy. They're really nice, really comfortable. Uh, it just kind of slots in where the the original kind of cubby box thing was i've got uh oh that's a uh, wireless charging phone cradle very useful and uh, reversing camera screen i'll show you the reversing camera at the back of the car shortly um so closing up the door now i've put on these strips here very good if you go and park in the supermarket car park and you get somebody in a people carrier alongside you with five kids and they swing the door open it won't dent the side of your car okay so i had a few little little kind of scrapes and there's a dent on the other side and i just got a bit fed up with that so i put these strips on uh haven't had any issues since then mud guards we've got mud guards front and back and we've also got these things down here now hopefully you can see that okay oh, you can't really see them very well um, I'll try and brighten that up when I edit this video, but they're, they're what's called spats or bibs. They're, their purpose is to stop water spraying up in front of the car when you go through a puddle. Do they work? No, not really. Especially with big tyres like this, the water just goes around them. So, um, But they look good. They look good. We've got uh, guards on the rear lights here. As you can see, I've got a rear dash cam which is wired into the number plate lights. So when I turn on the side lights or the headlights, the dash cam enables as well. It's also set up on a parking mode. So if I, if I bang that, yeah, there you go. You can see it's just lit up and started recording for a few minutes, just what's called parking mode. That's a next base 112, really cheap. They're like 30 quid, even less. Um, and it just sits there um, recording out the back should anybody crash into the back of me. Um, essential sticker here, just in case. You never know what's around the corner. Um, here is the reversing camera there. Okay, and we've got the mud guards. Now underneath the car, hopefully you can see this, there is a Mantec fuel tank guard absolutely essential if you go off-roading factory fuel tank is made of plastic one rock in the wrong place and it's going to rip that and that's it all your diesel is going to come out everywhere so uh, mantec fuel tank guard again i don't think you can buy them new nowadays but they do come up on ebay now and again they are very rare they are very expensive but they're worth worth paying the money for what else have we got then i think we're nearly there now 
uh, reversing cam, rear dash cam, oh, rear suspension lift. Okay, so the last thing here, and you're not really gonna be able to see it, but it's up in there, it's too dark, unfortunately, um, are my suspension lift spacers. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of edit in a, a photo of those. Okay, and I'll be doing a, a video on those. I've already done a video on fitting them on the rear of the car, and I'll do a, I'll do a video showing fitting on the front, and also I'm gonna replace the rear ones with slightly thicker ones to give a bit more lift. So those, I make those and I sell them. Um, currently not available at the moment, but hopefully available in around about February 2021, in about a month's time. I'm just currently going through the testing of the new design. They're made of polyurethane, a very, very firm, durable polyurethane, and they sit above the shock absorber, above the, the strut, uh, shock absorber strut top plate, and they just sort of effectively push the wheels down a bit, so raising the vehicle up off the ground by, by an inch or so, which uh, is all you need. Um, it makes it uh, a lot better for going off road in the future so that that's all the things I've done so far that I can think of there might be things I've missed here but um, uh, in the future I am going to be fitting a winch okay so all of this is going to come off and there's gonna be a big tray put behind with a, a big powerful 13,000 pound uh, winch put in there with, with remote controls and everything. So that, that'll be a major project. I'm probably gonna wait till the summer to do that because it's just freezing cold at the moment. And I don't really wanna be taking the whole front end off the car at the moment. I'll do that, do that when it's a bit warmer and a bit sunnier. Um, talking of cold weather, I had intended to fit a Webasto heater. Okay, so what is a Webasto heater? A Webasto heater is a diesel fired heater which you can activate with a remote control and it will warm up the the cabin so it will warm up the the, the heater uh, inside the car and blow warm air around inside the car and it will also warm up the engine block you, all of that without starting the engine so none of this coming out in your dressing gown and turning the key and leaving the engine running to try and de-ice the car you just press a button from in the house and the webasto fires up and gets the car nice and warm for you i have currently filmed part two I think of that video series I've not fitted it to the car yet um, I've, I've just been too busy with other projects and here we are in the middle of winter and I still haven't done it so did actually plan to get it done in the summer ready ready for this cold weather but uh, never mind best intentions so um, so I will uh, I will resurrect that project soon I'll get that fitted the the factory um, the factory fitted with Asto now now I should add here that British Freeland 2s do not have the Webasto, it's only for colder climates, uh, Russia, Poland, places like that. They stick it up in here, so it's kind of almost behind this grill here. This this is just a fake intake to match the other side, but it goes in there. Okay, so um, I've actually seen a video on YouTube recently of a guy who I was talking to about the Webasto, and he's actually beat me to it and fitted his and got his working. Now he fitted his up in here. I probably won't do that. I'm going to either fit mine down in here behind this bumper, there's a big space there. There's also a very big space underneath there where it could go. Um, so it will need a separate battery to run because it draws over 10 amps on a cold winter morning. You don't really want to flatten the battery warming the car up without the engine running. So I really do need a separate battery for it might also need a small separate fuel tank depends whether I want to connect into the main fuel lines or not I'm also going to be messing around with the turbocharger at some point this is not a sports car I know it's a two and a half ton lumbering beast of a heavy vehicle but I can't resist having a play with the turbo so the first thing I'm going to do is to make, instead of this grill here, which is actually a fake speaker grill, there's no speaker under there unless you've got the super duper sound system. Most Freelander 2s, that's fake. So I'm going to take that off and replace it with a, a nice triple gauge pod, which I'm currently working on, currently developing. And that will have voltmeter and oil pressure and also a boost gauge. Okay, so I'm then gonna be, once I've got a boost gauge, I can see what my boost is. 
and then I can tinker about with things like the turbo actuator, so it's a variable vane turbo, there's no wastegate on these turbos, um, the boost is controlled by altering the, the, the geometry of the vanes inside the turbo. There's also a, that thing there, you can just see it there, is the MAP sensor, not to be confused with the MAF sensor, MAF mass airflow sensor, this is a uh, sensor that uh, measures the volume of the air going in as well as its temperature. The MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, that one measures the pressure uh, relative to, an, uh, to a vacuum. Okay, it's not, not relative to atmospheric, hence the word absolute. Um, so that's effectively a vacuum slash boost sensor. And that will then measure the boost and send a signal to the turbocharger, um, telling it, whoa, you've got too much boost, you need to slow down a bit. Um, my idea is to um, mess around with that really, interfere with that signal and uh, uh, actually try and get a bit more boost out of this engine. We shall see, might work, might, might blow it up. So uh, don't know, one way to find out. What else, I've mentioned about the light bar I'm gonna put on top. Oh, the only other thing I can think of, which is also work in progress, and I've done three videos on this so far, is a snorkel. Okay, so the snorkel gonna go on there, going up there to a sort of, scoop or whatever some sort of intake at the top and down here into here I've got as far as actually making a prototype of that 3d printed and attached it to the car briefly enough to sort of do the video but it wasn't it wasn't really good enough to drive around with so I do need to do part four and probably part five of that video series get that project finished but again it got put on hold due to uh, all the other things I was doing that is it that is it i hope that was useful i hope it's given you some inspiration for projects to do on your own freelander twos many of the things that i've mentioned in this video i've got separate videos for so if you look back at my my channel you'll see videos going back a couple of years for all the various things like these uh, light things here and the strips and um uh, Light, lights on the roof and, and every, everything really. I try to film a video every time I do something on this car. So um, hopefully that was useful. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.